there's a research study by Dr. Seralini that what he did is he was a toxicologist on the French committee that evaluated the submissions by the biotech industry for their GMOs. And he noted that all their corn-fed rat submissions had serious issues and in, just, in just 90 days. In the Roundup Ready Corn example, there were over 50 statistically significant differences suggesting uh, signs of toxicity in the liver and kidneys. And so he decided to do his own research, but not for 90 days, for two years. And not just doing the small number of tests that Monsanto got away with, but doing a whole bank of tests. And he found that in the two years, starting in the fourth month, right after Monsanto ends its studies in 90 days, the rats started to get tumors. And by the end of the study, they had multiple massive tumors, which you can see on the earlier. Monsanto got me. Okay. They died. They had premature death, and they had organ damage to the liver, kidneys, pituitary, and in some cases, hormone damage. And what they did in this study was they wanted to find out whether it was the Roundup or the corn or the Roundup and the corn. So on the left side, it's a rat from the study that had just eaten the Roundup ready corn that had never been sprayed with Roundup. On the right side, it's a rat where the Roundup was in the drinking water, but they didn't eat the GMO corn, they ate natural corn. And in the middle, it was the Roundup ready corn that had been sprayed with Roundup. All three groups had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. So it was the Roundup alone, the GMO alone, and in combination that caused these problems. It was, first, the most, the most in-depth animal feeding study ever conducted prior to this was from Dr. Arpad Pustai, who discovered inherent dangers. And this was the next. This became the most in-depth study, two years, and immediately, immediately, Dr. Seralini got hammered. Within 24 hours, before the built time that scientists could actually read and evaluate and develop a response, they were circulating talking points to all of their front groups and all of their front scientists, sending it to the, to the papers, saying the same thing, and then at a certain point when so many of their own people said the same thing, they declared it a consensus. And one of the things they said was, he used the wrong rats. The rats were prone to cancer. But it was the same rats that Monsanto used in their study. He took Monsanto's studies and just extended it for two years. They said, oh, there's not enough rats in the control group. It was the same number of rats in the control group of the Monsanto study. He just extended it for two years. Then they said, these rats, because about 80 to 90 percent of the rats eating the GMOs and Roundup got tumors, and they said, in our studies, even the control group, 80%, 90% get, get tumors. So there might, there's no statistical difference when you compare it to historical controls. This is one of their methods they use to rig research. But there was only about 10% of the rats in Seralini's study that had tumors. So what, how do you explain that? So, and I had been advocating for this for a long time, they gathered... Sarlini's team, they gathered lab chow, rat chow, mice chow, from all over the world and tested it. And they found that the control groups which were eating this chow were eating food that contained GMOs and Roundup. So in all of their scientific studies, pairing animals that were purposely fed GMOs and Roundup to animals that were also fed GMOs and Roundup. So no wonder the Sprague Doily, Sprague Doily rats in their study, 80% to 90% got cancer or tumors because they were feeding them GMOs and Roundup and other pesticides and heavy metals in the rat chow. So it turns out that Seralini's methods were actually impeccable. I mean, they could have done some things better, but they clearly showed 
that GMOs should be taken off the market. And he won a, a federal whistleblower award, but he really never got the impact that his study deserved because of the massive disinformation campaign. And again, the materials made public from the lawsuit show some of the inside story. So David Saltmiras, who was that person that ghost wrote some of the stories, he, he, he boasted that he successfully facilitated numerous third-party letters to the editor, meaning he wrote them and had other people sign them, and that he described it as the last rites for Seralini's few remaining shreds of credibility. They also um, asked Bruce Chassie. He's the guy that they pay to go after me, created a whole website against me, which misquoted my book and then challenged my book. Um, he, I talked to Bruce Chassie, and he will send a letter to Wally Hayes directly and notify other scientists Wally Hayes was the editor of the journal that published Seralini. And he basically says, pushing it out, and he said, I remain adamant that Monsanto must not be put in the position of providing the critical analysis. In other words, it must be third parties. And then Bruce Chassie, to Wallace Hayes, my intent was to urge you to roll back the clock, retract the paper, and start a new review process. And then we find out that Wallace Hayes then became hired by Monsanto, paid $400 an hour as their consultant, and that one of Monsanto's scientists had been brought on as the biotech associate editor for this journal. And then guess what? They retracted the study. They retracted the study and described about three or four reasons why they retracted it. And one was, it wasn't conclusive. Now, alert scientists said, if we apply those criteria to all of the studies that you normally publish, one third of them would be taken away. Furthermore, there's published reasons why, criteria why you retract a study, and this fills none of them. So, the flushed Wallace Hayes wrote another one saying, well, there wasn't enough rats to constitute a cancer study. They never used the word cancer in the study. It was a toxicological study. They were surprised about the tumors. They never made a conclusion about cancer. So Wallace Hayes absolutely did not know what he was talking about. And he was obviously bought by industry. Fortunately, soon after it was retracted, it was republished by another peer-reviewed journal. And they, so Wallace Hayes' group peer-reviewed it twice, this journal peer-reviewed it, so it passed three peer reviews and remains intact. It was interesting, I was reading the final arguments of the third trial for Monsanto, and my name comes up. And it's, a, it's an email from one Monsanto executive to another any subject title, whack-a-mole. And they're talking about how I published an article about how GMOs were more dangerous to children, and they were telling Bruce Chassie to go after me. And they said, you know, Jeff said it again. That was the quote from their email. And the response by the other Monsanto executives was, funny you should use the word whack-a-mole. Donna Farmer and I started using that two years ago in our responses. So I'm part of the whack-a-mole campaign from Monsanto. You know, if you don't, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm a, a whack-a-mole. And uh, whack-a-mole is an is a arcade game where a mole comes up, and then you hit it as hard as you can and as fast as you can with a mallet. And then another one comes up and you hit it with a mallet. And another one comes up and if you can knock as many down as you, you can gain, gain points and keep your glyphosate on the market. That's how it is in the arcade games. 